My name is Olina, and I'm the head of ecosystem for Tender. Thank you so much for coming. Today's topic is speeding up Ethereum DApps by deploying to Tender Core. Like, how many of you heard of Tender Core before? Can I raise your hand? Wow. Thank you so much for coming. So we are a EVM, EVM compatible public chain that we are hundred times faster and thousand times cheaper than Ethereum, and which was founded by Elen Shi, who is the first, who is a Cornell professor and who is the first person who published the blockchain. Uh, blockchain industrial paper, and also our CEO is Chris Wong, who is the founder of Plato, co-founder of Plato, and who uh, sold to Disneyland for half a billion. And another co-founder is Chris Lee, who is a famous hacker in China. And so, so what's, like, how many of you are doing, like, deploying on Ethereum right now? Ooh. Yeah, let me ask you experience. What's your experience when you deploy on Ethereum? My experience? Yes. Like good or bad? Honest <laughs> oh, like, yeah. uh, experience. Yeah. I mean, um, well, right now with the tools that we have, right, it's not really that difficult. Mm -hmm. I would say it, it's as simple as like running a framework like Truffle, mm -hmm. or like using Remix, and then you can just deploy it, or you know, just writing your own um, Node script, I guess. So in essence, it's not really that painful. But what's um, your main challenge? Main challenge. Maybe the main challenge would be people who are new to like developing Ethereum. They won't know this from the get go. They need to like research a lot on it. So um, yeah, I guess I guess if you know like blockchains in general, like have knowledge on it, then it wouldn't be that challenging. But for a new developer like entering the space, then it'll be a lot more challenging. I guess. I yeah. see. I mean, personally, I did. Really fine challenge. So. <laughs> oh, I see. Cool. I just want to get like who else like raise up your hand. Like, what is your uh, experience when you're running Ethereum, and uh, what's what do you think it can be better? Who who raise your hand just now? So the main thing is smart contracts because the people who are like older than fifty years old. I'm sorry, if somebody <laughs> is older than fifty here in this room. Uh, like the majority of them, they don't understand that they cannot make the process fall back. Like, if we deal, like I give you, you pay me. I give you, then they, I don't pay you. Why? Because something changed, but there is a contract and you cannot make it the other way. So the people of uh, who got used to the previous industry, they don't get that. They, like, how, how come that I cannot rewrite the contract? but change something in the past. I think that this is the main issue, but as time goes by, people who are 30 become 40, people who are 40 become 50. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's my point. So, this is the thing that, that uh, I, I, I can see okay, cool. about this. Let me get another two input, like what's your experience running on Ethereum, and what do you think, it, what do you wish is, is can do better? Who else can volunteer? I need another two. Yeah, please. Who raised your hand just now? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see before. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks for re 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 remembering my name and, and shooting that that wonderful arrows. Oh, okay. Um, okay. For me, like personally, I think that um, the debugging tools that are on Ethereum is kind of not very friendly now. Like it's when something goes wrong, it just tells you that. Uh, either you run out of gas, or uh, the the execution uh, got the transaction got reverted, but you don't really know why. And then if you try to do a trace or ether scan, you will have to like kind of like understand the very like uh, low level uh, language uh, or, or EVM language. Uh, but that's that's very uh, that's a very high barrier to entry, I suppose, for most people, including me, right? And of course, if you try to do it on Remix as well, you know the um, trying to understand the error isn't very helpful, um, so you kind of have to keep like redeploying contracts and then you just keep trying and trying, but um, it's very hard to find the reason why, and sometimes it could be because you didn't include like a fallback playable function. That's kind of what happened to us yesterday, yeah, but that's yeah, our experience. Interesting. Last one. Who wants to, to tell us your experience on Ethereum and what your vision can be better? Kingsley. 
I see you raise your hand just now. You want to say something? Yeah, so with existing um, Ethereum decentralized applications, if I want to run a high throughput application like a decentralized prediction market, or if I want to um, use a decentralized exchange with fast settlement, mm -hmm. um, it can be challenging to run on Ethereum with high throughput. Great, thank you so much for everyone's input. Because in Thunder, we actually, besides all the problems you are like challenging or facing, we actually are working on a better public chain, which is 100 times, 100 times faster and 1,000 uh, times cheaper. Uh, anyone heard of Augur? A U G U R? One, two, three. So, what, what does Augur do? Oh, wow. Okay, so Augur is a decentralized prediction market uh, that allows you to place like bets on any event, like future future events. Like, what's the price of the the Ethereum? Uh, the price of Ethi uh, Ethereum exceed one thousand by the end of this year, for example. I met up with an uh, Augur's co-founder Joey yesterday. Cause for trading, like not everyone. Probably like uh, not everyone deploying smart contract needs lots of faster or cheaper, but for certain uh, certain place they, they really need the transact speed to be up. And what Joey told me yesterday is that if he deploy on on Ethereum, it's like transaction speed is like uh, one or two, but for us it's like hundred or hundred fifty. So it's actually uh, really impressive. So we, our testnet actually came out uh, this August, and they being the first beta user, they were surprising to see how, how come we are so fast. So this workshop, we actually ran up to just uh, put it together and to teach people how, to, how do you migrate from, uh, from Ethereum to Thunder and to make it faster and cheaper. So um, let's see. <laughs> We run a little bit um, of time, like over time today, and our agenda, originally we, de uh, we designed 11.30 to 40, we will have a vendor overview, and then we're gonna have like 20 minutes vendor demo, like how does it work, and then from 12 to 12.30, it will be a workshop. Our wonderful engineers from vendor team, they will show you how to do it step by step. And uh, let me first introduce our speaker, who is Richard Chu, and he is director of the app deployment. And he is here to show us how to speed up Ethereum D apps by deploying to Thunder Core. So let's put us, our hands together. Welcome, Richard Chu. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Elena, for the intro. So, hi guys, I'm Richard. Uh, as noted, I heading up the, the app department at Thunder. So what we do uh, at Thunder, there is the blockchain component of the core team that develops the core blockchain technology itself to be at this speed, at this scale. And then we also have uh, the department that handles and, and try to develop the apps. Right? So we also have to be our own customer. So we have to try to deploy the apps on our own platform and make sure it performs. And so a lot of the experiments that we've done so far has actually been uh, trying out all the great open source smart contracts out there on Thundercore and to see how easy it is to actually do migration and then how quickly that can happen and instantly get the benefit of speed and scale. So in, while doing so, we also wanted to create apps that demo uh, the speed and scale of our blockchain. So, something like a chat app, right? If you imagine that requires that kind of latency that you need to be able to send a message in seconds or even sub-seconds, on Ethereum or on Bitcoin or most current public blockchain platform, it's not feasible, right? That's, sometimes on Ethereum mainnet, on our own experiences, it's, the message may take a minute to complete, right? Imagine you try to send a message to, I try to send a message to Alina, it takes a minute for her to get it. That doesn't scale, it doesn't work, right? So, to demonstrate that, then you guys can also try it out yourself too, to go to our production, chatdemo.thundercore.com to experience yourself, right? And then, what we are demonstrating today is that 
uh, you can actually try out the same chat is a decentralized application, right, that connects from the front end directly through Web3 to Rinkeby and also through Thunder, that you can experience right away that there's instant performance benefit and cost benefit of Rinkeby, it's already faster than the Ethereum mainnet, and even then it takes about 15 to 20 seconds to send a message and to complete the transaction. And then also transaction fee and cost is not negligible, okay? And then as we see during different times of Ethereum, then uh, during the peak times, then transaction time, transaction cost could be right, uh, dollars or even tens of dollars. On Thunder, we haven't faced and seen that kind of problem at all um, during our testnet testing. Right? We've seen near instant transaction confirmation and an almost trivial and negligible transaction cost. And then we'll also be demonstrating that uh, the chat demo that we'll demonstrate will actually walk you guys through uh, how to deploy the smart contract. And then we'll run uh, on a computer, right, a local host front end to connect to the smart contract that we just deployed. And then we'll show you how quickly right, you can actually just, the same smart contract will deploy we could be on the spot for you guys. We'll deploy to Thunder on the spot for you guys. You guys have to you can just see it for yourself how easy and how quickly that can happen. And there's no smart contract code change needed, right? And instantly you get the benefit. So at this point, I'm gonna head over to our wonderful engineers. So here's Sam and Jack, and then they'll demonstrate both uh, the front end and the user experience of that it requires no change on the front end. All you have to do is switch RPC and you're on a different network, right? There's no code change needed. And also from uh, contract deployment and the backend perspective that it really is no smart contract code change at all. As long as you have the network ID and network information uh, to buy our PC URL, that's it, you're good to go. So I hand it over to them. We'll plug the HDMI. Oh, okay. There you want to go out. Sure. Uh, hey guys, I'm Sam. Uh, I'm just going to demonstrate sending the same message, uh, which is just a transaction, uh, via Thunder and via Rinkeby. Um, the important thing to note is that Thunder is much faster, as will become apparent, and also the front end requires no code changes, uh, it's just the current provider changes uh, from Thunder to Rinkeby. Uh, so first I'll send a message with Rinkeby. Uh, let me, yes, I'm already on the Rinkeby test network uh, via MedMask, so send a Rinkeby message. Oh. Uh, all right, so I'll confirm the transaction, uh, which we can see is, is not totally inexpensive, it's five cents. It's sending the transaction, uh, so unfortunately we may have to wait a few seconds in this rink be. Yeah, and on average, rink be is already much faster than mainnet, right? Uh, it's about 15 seconds compared to mainnet, sometimes over a minute in our own experiences. Uh, cool. So it's Yep, all right, it's just sent. Uh, and you guys can also feel free to try this yourself. Uh, this is at chatdemo.thunderport.com. To be the model. And you can uh, also click to see the transaction on the chain, too. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's check it out on Rinkeby. The Wi Fi isn't, isn't the best. Uh, right away, you can see that well, I have to refresh. Yeah, 34 seconds ago, the transaction went through to the chain, so the chat transaction, right, as demonstrated here. All right, now I'll send the same message uh, with Thunder. You have to click on the staging one first. Oh, yeah. yeah. Staging, and then click on it again. Test. Yeah. All right, we'll refresh. Yeah. So all Sam is demonstrating is, right, the switch all we have to do right now is just switch the RPC right, from RinkyB to a custom RPC URL that we have to enter. It's, we have to work with MetaMask to actually get 
Thunder as one of the officially listed, so you can actually don't have to type it the RPCR yourself, but that's what we've done so far. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is, is, as a front engineer, you don't actually have to change any code uh, to support Thunder. Confirm the transaction. We can actually send it with a much lower gas price. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So there's a thunder message. Yeah. That's uh, links to our uh, scan. Yeah, and you can see how the transaction actually went through, and uh, we have our own current strip, like kind of a, a lightweight version of Ether Scan that our block explorer to demonstrate that transaction actually went through to, uh, and is now on the chain. Yeah. Right. And then. One thing to note too from what Sam demonstrated in the UI is that the latest version of MetaMask actually uh, kind of locks you in at minimum gas price uh, of one G way, way, right? It, but you can't even set it to be lower. But on our network, you don't need to spend one G way as the gas price. It could be actually one, not one G way. So yeah, that's one, actually one, one way. Yeah, one way. Yeah. One way. <laughs> kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and if you need tokens, you know who to ask. This guy. <laughs> sure, you can. If you can just, he says token just in larger quantity, please. Just email yeah. him. Like, we need 50 tokens. Yes. <laughs> and you can also request it via the chat. So, straight. Yeah, but we're going to bump that from one test open to higher. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll do that. Alright, cool. Yeah. So, I'll, uh, so, so I'll show how to, uh, how to deploy it. I'll walk you guys through it. So, well, this is Jack. Uh, so, he's our full stack engineer. He's leading one of the projects. One of the secret projects. <laughs> it's a secret one, maybe. So. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so here's the chat room, and we have a you know we have a client and smart contract folder. There is no server at all. The server is just a it's just a smart contract that got deployed. So if you look at our Trouble JS, we have Thunder and Ethereum and Rinkeby deployed, like configured here, and you can see from the Thunder one the gas price is set to one. So we're gonna try that in a bit. So this, this is pretty much the only code change needed, and it's not even related to smart contract. This is just configuration of Truffle GS. Yeah, you really just have to configure the RPC endpoint. And, it, and, and as long as it's, um, it's, it's a UDN compatible endpoint, it will be good. So I'm going to go over here. You can see that I have the client running. So I'm going to go to the client. Don't complain about not having any, um, not having any deployment. So we'll try to deploy on the on the Rinkeby first. Center. Yeah, so it's compiling the contract first. And uh, for those of you who are familiar, that means uh, for the country that we want to deploy, it generates a JSON. And then at this point, it's not deployed yet. So as you can see, the network is empty object. And then uh, this is the this is the part where Richard. Yeah, so because Rinkeby takes a while. <laughs> yeah, as we know, right? And then because our chat application contains uh, different contracts, right, in this application, so that it has to go through each contract to point one by one. So it definitely takes a little time. But uh, you can, add, you guys can actually experience a few of that too. Is that when we're deploying the same set of contract to uh, Thunder, it's fraction of speed as well, right? Because each contract deployment is a different transaction, and then every transaction is just that much faster on Thunder. Almost yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. So, um, so you know, by using Thunder to test your EVM, you can you can do it very cheaply and quickly. Uh, I think it's it's a good testing ground for CI/CD before you deploy to make that even. Yeah, and it's mostly the tools that, uh, especially if you guys have been working with on Ethereum, it's the same set of tools that you guys are familiar with, Truffle, right? And then uh, it's pretty standard MetaMask. Those things. All current DAP developer being Ethereum being the most prominent platform, we want to make it as easy as possible, right? That's why the full EVM compatibility really helps here, right? So then, in our experiences, we've taken various uh, open source smart contracts, including Kyber, right, and including CryptoKitties, right? These various smart contracts that just are out there, we, and then even on Etherscan too, there's the verified contract has the code that's available for everybody to see, right? We even try to just take some of those and then 
being able to try it out on our network. And then so far, it has worked wonders. Right? It just takes, and then all you have to do is add in the network ID, and then you'll actually plug and play. OK, you can stop now. OK. <laughs> all right, let's play here. <laughs> so network ID 4, that matches you with the ring of Network ID 4. And this is where the counter is deployed. So we can now come back and refresh here. You can see that, hey, it took, it took 0.3. It took 0.3 the like ETH to deploy there. That. That's the other thing for cost, yeah. So deploy that same chat room contract. Uh, we wanted to try it out on mainnet too, and then we realized after deploying once, we spent about $100 to deploy a contract. So that, that was quite absurd. Uh, at that time, actually, probably close to 0.5 ether at kind of peak time. So you imagine the cost of deploying one chat room contract uh, <coughs> was is not negligible, and that's kind of underestimated. Thunder also works with Remix. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a Remix user myself. It's not so popular like the other team, but yeah, it works there. So yeah, this takes a while to show up because um, uh, MetaMask will also cache the reads because it assumes block comes in at a much slower rate. Anyway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to. You should also see the transaction on Ether. Oh yeah, too, yeah, right. Because yeah. in this one, the contract we just deployed now is a new set of transactions. Yeah. One by seconds. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, and here are the cost, the transaction fees. The big one is the 0.22. Alright, so let me switch over to Thunder. Yeah, don't look at that balance. <laughs> it is a test account, so. Yeah, that's a test account. So, alright. So as you can see, the, um, the, the JSON, like the network part is not deployed yet. We don't have this, we don't have the 19 key deployed here, so we're gonna do that. Thunder. And you can see, is the only thing, only thing we need to do different is really specify the network to be Thunder, and that's it, right? Just because Truffle.js already has that pre-configured and it recognizes the Thunder network, so only at Truffle Migrate. That's the only place you need to specify. It's almost done. <laughs> yeah, it's done. So we'll come, we'll come back here and see that, hey, it's now deployed on these two networks. So, we'll name, so I'll, I'll try to change my name. Most of the time, it's just waiting for Meta Master to load. Alright, it's done. I found her. It's in. <laughs> Alright, so even you guys kind of see it firsthand that same set of contracts, right, same front end, but instantly the performance benefit, the cost benefit is non-trivial, you can instantly feel it yeah. and experience it, right? No coaching needed. And even the most important thing is, as Jack mentioned in, uh, in the Truffle GS, right? Specifying the gas price, right now it could be, it's, it's not even fractions, but it's right. one way. It could if you request one token from us and integrate Thunder into CICD for testing your contracts, you can use that forever. <laughs> Pretty, for a while, uh, pretty much, yeah. So one, yeah, you, one can deploy, you can deploy contract every every five every five minutes, every every commit, every day. It's not gonna it's not it's not gonna dent your balance at all. Oh, yeah. sorry, I have a question. So when you say it's EVM compatible, do you have an extended um, functionality on top of EVM or is it just right now entirely but right now it's entirely EVM, right? So, but we're also looking at they're working on some APIs. Yeah, yeah. additional APIs that are helpful, and especially for uh, developers to debug, or in more is it to uh, additional more APIs. PC and more wallet management. Yes. Right. So, so basically, right now, um, Thunder Token is only um, compared to Ethereum, right? You just switch the um, the consensus engine mm -hmm. from the proof of work right now to uh, the Thunder consensus, right? <coughs> Underlying thing, yes, to, to put it at a high level, yes. Right. Yeah. Um, so in the optimistic case where you are you have like a leadership, very like a clear leader consensus algorithm where like, like traditional BFT kind of um, and and so so when I connect 
when, when I'm using the app to connect, like customer RPC to connect to the to if um, you're talking to a network that you're talking to a few well-known nodes uh, on the th on the core. Yes, yeah, so yeah, it talks to our core nodes. So it's actually sits behind a load balancer, and then so it basically talks right. to any one of our core nodes that could, right, you can connect to similar to your in that sense. Right. Another question that I don't really understand is like uh, just now when you deploy, you said like you deploy to two nodes or two addresses. Is that no, no, you deploy to in Truffle. Uh, in Truffle, you're able to deploy to multiple networks. Yeah. And then when you when you use that in your front end, the nice thing is about it is you can switch you can switch the network in you know, via VMS right. and have the application still work. Okay. So that they're able to use the same application on multiple networks. Okay. Yeah. And the if, and you know I'll definitely recommend using Thunder Test Network for your CI/CD to test your smart contracts for all the automations and other things. It's faster to verify and um, the only thing the only thing that could be uh, that could trip you up a little bit is if your application depends on the block number, the, the in Thunder the block number increases much faster. So you cannot count on there being like six thousand blocks a day or something. <laughs> yeah, you'll be something closer to eighty thousand blocks a day. Yeah. So it's pretty much happening. Block confirmation time is like around a second, uh, or a little over a second per block, right? So then yeah, and for these for real world applications, we've seen that uh, random number generators, right? A lot of times depend on actual block number in the future, right? But as for Thunder's case, this actually probably wouldn't work that well, right? Because then, given how fast block increases, so. Uh, but if you're using like a commit reveal approach for RNG, uh, Thunder is pretty great because you can have both phases in like two seconds, so compared so, to thirty for the three. What about storage? What was storage though? Like, like, it's like, I think like every, even you changing the name, saving after your username is like a right operation into the contract, right? So if you're still using EVM, then I mean, the storage is going to add up pretty quickly, right? Yeah, yeah. The, um, I think we have had uh, applications for, like we have this 2D pixel map where people send in the data and, and we kind of generate this picture <laughs> like, as a DF and the uh, guest cost there, the guest unit cost is still low, so right. yeah. But the but, but the but the amount of guests you spend, the number of guests that may be high. But if you multiple, but it's gonna be multiple, you know, multiples of one way, right? So right. The thing is, like, um, yeah, from you from user perspective, right? The, the gas is pretty low. The yeah. GDP that pays pretty low, but like from I mean, like the uh, minor point, oh, sorry, like the, yeah. the operator or the data or whatever um, on the Thunder network, right? They have to store so many data, and mm -hmm. um, and people are. Users are not paying for the time value of the, the right operation that they did. Um, it's, yeah. So, um, wouldn't that, that? I mean, it's not a drop in the replacement for YPFS, so if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> no. Yeah. 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 After all, we're still running these on SSDs, so, yeah. We will advise storing the heavy data outside of the chain. So, uh, you are making the block bigger and faster in yeah. simple words as far as I understand. But what were the issues that you came with and that you solved about security? <coughs> like what was the main thing that you needed to find to find according to security? Okay, so for example, so what what are you doing? You are making a transaction from one place to another. Uh, how much is the probability that somebody can steal this money during this transaction? So then, uh, I can speak. So this definitely more core blockchain related questions, and I encourage you to reach out to our core team to answer some of those. But from a high level security perspective, is that yes, we have a uh, accelerator, and also we have our consensus nodes to to vote. Uh, so then, these consensus nodes, right, as long as three quarters of them right, kind of vote on the transactions and it will go through and then that's in our kind of fast chain. Uh -huh. So then we have our, and then we also have a pullback mechanism to, uh, it's called our OX network that is pretty much just like the main theory that you can still have complete decentralized trust mm -hmm. in that regard. So this is how we're balancing kind of performance and also security uh, in terms of two places and two networks. Yeah, you kind of have to attack what, like seventy-five percent of the node. Correct. To to like either order transactions differently or to 
he prioritized that. Okay. Yeah, so that so that was still kind of like Jack said, right? So then using that mechanism, then we can still maintain that this is our public blockchain, right? Then then you have to be able to do that uh, at that scale in order to really try to right, make it not secure anymore. So. So uh, maybe just adds on from Adam thinking of uh, the, the, the other other uh, instances. Basically, um, it has two components. Where um, in the optimist space, you are uh, trusting on a like, traditional BFT, uh -huh. where it's super super fast. Now, if the leader is like malicious, then you fall back to the like the work, which is so in the worst case, is as fast as Ethereum right now. But in the optimist case, you are like uh, opting out because you are thinking like there's no, it's not as malicious as we. It was made very fast, so that's how we can scale up. If we combine the best of the both worlds, so if they detect that the leader is malicious, then we'll go back to the uh, real world. Yeah, until we sort of see sure, right? Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, please. Please, uh, any, any other questions that you, know, you guys may yeah. have here or afterwards? Feel free to come talk to us, right? And then we also we want to demonstrate uh, kind of the process of what we went through to deploy. And we can work with you guys too. Do right? you guys have certain contracts that you guys wanted to try out and even deploy today, right now? We're available here at least for the next half an hour or so. If you already have a truffle.js. Exactly. If you already have truffle.js and then use it, then we'll definitely be here too. Or if you already have your um, code running inside Remix. Yes. Yeah, or Remix, yes. So, yeah, yeah, we can help you deploy it. Yeah, so we're. We want to make this more interactive uh, after this particular presentation, such that yeah, we'll be on the ground floor and then actually help everybody try to deploy on Thunder. And so as you guys seen it just now, and how quick and how fast it, it is to actually make it happen. So we want to encourage that. Yeah, but I think a good step is to set up the art. Yeah. Yeah, but a good step to start trying is to um, go to the chat demo dot and make sure you have um, you have some. Uh, I found the test holes into your wallet. Will you? Yes. Great, thank you so much Richard and your team for the great introduction and walk through one by one. And uh, we, Thunder, we actually have currently, we have lots of openings from engineer to marketing and also to product. So if you or your family or friends want to uh, 